Welcome to another episode of Harrison Hobbies. Today we are going to be looking at a Champion 1800 watt uh, inverter generator here that's dual fuel, so it'll run on either gasoline or propane. Um, today's video will start out with a quick walk around of the generator and then we'll move into some quick testing uh, to see what the waveform looks like and make sure that it can support the draws listed here. So let's dive in. The only feature on here that I've found right now that is kind of blemishy is the fact that uh, right here this panel does not align. Uh, so I'm not sure if that was an issue with assembly. Um, there's, there's no marks or any indication of like an impact that caused that. Uh, and even if you go on to like Amazon and look at pictures, you can see a little bit of a bulge there. Um, but we'll have to figure out what's causing that uh, a little bit later. So the first step is going to be adding some oil to this. We took off the side panel already. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to be using 10 weight 30 and then we're supposed to fill to yeah, basically the bottom of the threads. So one of the nice features here is it does come with the funnel and then we have a dipstick here with the full line. Um, typically with these kinds of engines you just fill until it's at the very bottom of the threads there. So we'll put this in and we'll add more. So we'll pour in some oil here. That's actually probably right where we should be. Okay. Ah, so this is nice. This is a, a rubberized piece here that... Uh, They'll catch a lot of it. Yeah. So you can turn that back to the way it was. Yeah, there we go. That's... We're right there in the middle. Okay. Now let's put that side panel back on. There it is. Yeah, there you go. So this is going to be our propane regulator. This is going to hook up to a 20 pound propane tank. Uh, you can also buy adapters that allow this to hook up to the little green bottles here. Uh, the disadvantage of the little green bottles is because they're so small typically they'll end up freezing over whenever this thing starts to kick into some higher wattage. But it does come with this piece here, some assembly required, and it allows you to hook the, uh, the hose here for storage, which is a really cool feature. And then that unclips, we can take this right here, and then you have a positioning key right here, and so clips right in. To remove it, you just push the ferrule here back into the generator, uh, so that's a pretty nice feature. And then let's look at the panel, so we have a pull cord here, and then we have some settings here for gasoline power, which we won't be using right now, and some settings over here for propane power. Uh, so you'll set it to your choke on all the way, you'll start it up, and then you'll turn the dial here to turn your choke off, and then you'll end up at a run here, and then there are physical detents, so the button kind of pops into position here. So that's pretty nice. Uh, one last feature that this has that I think is pretty cool is the fact that it has a little LED light here that shows your, uh, that lights up your fuel gauge here. Uh, we'll find out whether that stays on all the time. Uh, if, you know, it has maybe a big capacitor in here or something, so in the event that you do need to fuel partway through, uh, yeah, it stays on to eliminate your gas can versus only being on while the generator's on, in which case it's kind of pointless because you'd never fuel with your generator on, hopefully. So uh, let's get some propane, we'll get it started, and then we'll run it through some load testing. Okay, now to get the generator started, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put it into the choke mode at the bottom here, and then we're going to pull the cord a couple of times, that will bring propane into the system, and then we'll take the choke off, and then we'll be able to start it here, and then we'll leave it in the run position. Uh, whenever we're ready to kill it, we will turn it into the no run position, and then we will turn the valve off on the propane tank. If you need to do an emergency stop, there isn't actually a stop button here, so if we were running on gasoline, this would stop flow of gas. Uh, if you needed to stop it emergently, you'll just turn it back to choke. That will flood the engine with propane, and then it'll shut itself off. So we will give it a shot now with it in the choke mode. Then we'll put it into run. There we go. And let's have a quick look. So we'll keep it running and we'll talk just to show this is a relatively quiet unit. You can see we're running on liquid propane gas so there's no timer. This is showing that you have outlet power 
That would turn on when you have uh, low oil, and that'll turn on when it's time for a maintenance. Uh, we have no fuel here because, again, we're hooked up to liquid propane, and that will reset a fault, and then this turns on and off eco mode. So you can hear the engines pull up a little bit. It's still not very loud. This is a pretty quiet generator. Uh, it is parallel ready, so if you have a second one of these, you'll be able to hook up to those. You have your 120 volt outlet here, and then you have a 12 volt cigarette lighter. They claim that it comes with a 12, uh, 5 volt USB adapter here, and so that's the equivalent of uh, something you can get off Amazon, like a cigarette lighter to USB plug. So let's go through the shutdown procedure real quick, and then we'll run through some testing. So first we'll put it in the no run position, and then we'll turn off the propane here. We'll give it a couple of seconds. And we're done. So, and real quick, just so we can get some like for like comparison, the other day we reviewed the Baja generator. So this one, well, certainly it is about half the weight of the, uh, the Champion here. The Baja here is not much smaller. And then we have the old de facto Generac here. So, see all three next to each other. Um, this thing really is about the same size as the Generac here. So we will dive into some testing here. We have a cheap uh, a DC to AC inverter. And so I assume that this is going to be a sine wave because it's more of a premium generator. This should be a modified sine wave, AKA a square wave. Uh, I think I got this for like $8 on Amazon. It's a little, what? Uh, 75 watt continuous 100 watt peak so we won't even load test this what we're just going to do eh, actually we might load test it we'll, we'll find out um, but we'll be able to use the generator here to power this guy so we can show what a bad sine wave looks like versus a good sine wave not that there should ever be a bad sine wave it is a square wave okay so let's get in here we'll start by turning on our propane we'll give it a prime <laughs> Go into run. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to hook in our line splitter. Um, this right here is it's just a flare. You can buy these from anyone, really. Uh, and it'll split the lines. So you have a positive and negative, and we'll be able to measure the, uh, the inductance of this to measure the current. Uh, and then we also have some test probes here. So we'll plug this in here, and then we'll get a voltage right now. So we'll put this on here and we'll measure voltage. So, so we're running 121.9 volts. That's perfect. That's exactly what we would expect. Uh, now we'll put in a load. There. Okay. So we'll pay attention to the 58.6 hertz, 61. Uh, and so we can see the sine wave here. That is a perfect sine wave. And then we'll give the heater a little bit of power. So I just turned the fan on. It is moving air. Uh, we are running 2.23 watts. Now let's turn the heater off. So it started just fine. And then our frequency is 58.6. So the frequency drops a little bit. Uh, or it's not holding up. Usually whenever the RPM goes up, the frequency should go up a little bit. But we're still well within reason here. Uh, and we're running 8.1 amp. So let's figure out what that is. 8.1 times 120. We'll say it's at 120. Gives us 972 watts. So we're running uh, about half of its capacity. Now, uh, if you want to hold that there. The next step is we're going to uh, go in the full throttle. Here. 
So just so we can see what a square wave looks like, this is about as cantry as you get. Uh, it's completely negative, zero positive, zero negative, zero positive. And so if we hook up a, an inductive load here, which should never be done, so we can see here that the waves have just gotten wider. Our frequency is 58, so we're actually holding pretty good. Um, but we'll shut it off real quick here. We'll go back to zero, and we can see that they get fatter. So the dwell time at positive and negative is higher, and so that's just going to put that much more pressure on an inductive load. Well, that was a review of our Champion 1800 watt, 2000 peak watt uh, inverter generator here. Uh, based on the testing there, it's giving us a really clean waveform. It's holding its spec uh, in terms of frequency, so usually you get around 60 hertz plus or minus a couple of percent. Um, so by holding it around 58, we're good there. Uh, it was able to run an 1800 watt load with virtually uh, no issue there. And uh, it was relatively quiet. Again, most of the video here was filmed with the generator running. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to hear ourselves whenever I go in and edit it. Um, but overall, it seemed to do a great job. It's a little on the heavier side, but it's still pretty good for what it is. Uh, and so I think it'll be a completely competent generator for any kind of small emergency, you know, power outages, running a fridge, um, maybe even a space heater, though I'm not sure that that would be the best use of propane or gas uh, when you can get something like a Mr. Heater Buddy. But certainly running something like a TV or a computer, your Wi-Fi, a fridge, uh, it would have no issue. And again, with the waveform there, you're going to be completely fine to run an inductive load. So thanks for watching. Check back soon for more videos.